You're watching Anime Diet. Watch anime, live anime, be anime. Um, similarly, I would also recommend to be an actor. Uh, so, but then like the question is, how do you become an actor? And what I always recommend, because it's, it was my entry point, uh, is community theater. And community theater for a number of reasons. Number one, it's free! Uh, and until you're really dedicated and you're like, oh, this is exactly what I want to do, and this is really what I want to put my energy and time and money and everything else into, uh, doing something for free to kind of dip your toes in and see if you actually like it is really, really shrewd. Um, and also, in uh, every single market, in every single city all around the world, uh, there is a market for voice acting, right? There's regional commercials and things like that. And while I might not know a lot about different markets that I'm not um, familiar with, uh, what I do know is that you're gonna meet a lot of like-minded people within community theater who are going to be able to tell you who the good you know, agents are, or managers, or casting directors, or any number of things uh, that I'm not gonna be able to tell you about your market. Um, this is a unique situation because I only live about 20 minutes from here in Dallas. So I do know that there are lots and lots and lots of amazing uh, community theater projects here. Um, also, uh, in partaking in community theater and in volunteering, you're going to contribute to the local art scene. And you're going to get to know a lot of people and experience a lot of different weird kinds of plays and dances and performance art and all this other stuff that I think is really important. Like you should take in as much media and as much performance as you can uh, so that whenever that time does come, whenever you're in the right room with the right people at the right moment and you're prepared, uh, then you have a wealth of knowledge. Um, you're also going to learn a lot of really hard-won facts and truths about acting within community theater. Uh, my favorite lesson that I learned as a child was the word no because you're going to be told the word no as an actor far more than you're ever told the word yes. Um, so I always say, uh, you know, try community theater first. Don't be discouraged if you audition and that first time you're not cast. More than likely, you won't be. And it's not because you're not talented or smart or pretty or brave or tough. It's just because they don't know you and they don't know what kind of work ethic you have and they don't want to invest in somebody until they know. So you can always say, hey, you know what, I didn't get cast as Little Orphan Annie because I'm a half Japanese girl without red hair, but I would love to volunteer as an usher or in the box office or in concessions. And then when they start to see that I'm showing up on time, I'm reliable, I'm always ready, I have a positive attitude, then maybe they're like, you know what, couldn't be Little Orphan Annie, but she can be an orphan in Oliver, you know, like, so you kind of start to build those relationships. And then after a while working with that community theater and making those connections and learning those hard lessons, you can be like, you know what? I do want to do this. This does sound like fun. However, I will say, if there's any other job in the entire world that you can have that you would like, do that. Do that. It's so much do easier. That. Yeah. Because there is no golden formula. There is no, like, follow these steps and you will be successful. That's just not the business that it is. However, having said that, if it is really what you want in your heart and in your body and in your bones, I've, I've known I wanted to be an actor since I was five and like I deviated a bit and then I was like, that's stupid. Um, so like if you know it and it's who you are, then nothing I say or Colleen says or anyone says will deter you. And I wish you luck and I hope to work with you someday. Same. So that's it. The end. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm really into dad jokes. Um, so my partner, uh, yeah, my partner has great dad jokes, uh, and a lot of my friends have great dad jokes. And because you have put me on the spot at this very moment, uh, no, 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 that's why I'm here. I'm here to uh, let me entertain. Uh, but uh, yeah, I can't think of one right now, um, but I will by the end of this panel. Do you I've have got one. A, I've oh, got see? one. It just popped into my head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why did the seagull fly by the sea? Because if he flew by the bay, he'd be a bagel. But I'm fine. <laughs> awesome. awesome. You're welcome. That was awesome. <laughs> My favorite, favorite thing, I mean, I love I loved to work, so I'll just start with that. So I'm not going to be like, wham. Um, so, no, I absolutely love, love, love what I do. I feel so lucky to get to do what I do. It's the best job ever, and I absolutely love it. That being said, my absolute favorite thing to do is a group read for original animation. There is nothing like 
be in a, in a room with a bunch of microphones and a bunch of your fellow voice actors who are just stupidly talented and hilarious and getting to, it's, you know, it's just, it's the best thing ever. So much fun, so fulfilling. You're working off of your, each other. You're laughing your face off. It's, <laughs> it's shocking that anything ever gets recorded. Um, but it's, it's, just, it's just the best. That's my favorite. Um, I can't say that I have a favorite. It's similar. Like, I just like working. And, and, and there are, I am, I'm not as fortunate. I've never been in a situation oh, such as that. I wish I, that for you. Thank you. I wish that for <laughs> I me. I wish that for you. Thank you. I, I, do. I, I, I wish that we could do it together. That'd me be too. That would be so fun. Um, yeah. I, I, it sounds amazing. And like, I have really done is. like sort of group things, but not to original animation. And that, I mean, that would be the best scanning the room for minors. Hello! Um, <laughs> yeah, that would be the best. Um, that would be so cool. And I'm, I, I aspire. I aspire. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they are, they're all, they all have different, uh, you know, benefits and pitfalls. Um, doing dubbing is obviously, can be challenging, you know, because you have limitations. <laughs> I can't even do that. I'm messing up my hair. <laughs> You're doing lots of stuff all at once. Chewing um, gum and standing on your head. Yeah. Um, my, my, my cans are broken. There's beeps happening. What's going on? <laughs> True. True. There's latency. Uh, yeah. yeah. So there's a little, there are pitfalls to all of them. Uh, like video game sessions can be super challenging, especially like fighting games. Because then you're just like, uh, a few years ago before there were uh, more considerations in place, sometimes they'd be like, all right, so five hours and we're going to scream the whole time. And it's like, oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, yeah, so there, there are limitations, but there are also really amazing benefits. You know, we get to tell stories for a living, and it is, we are really lucky, really lucky, really fortunate. Um, and I'm shocked every day that, that I get to do what I do. It's always like, really? Okay, yeah, that's, that's all right, yeah. Um, it's always weird, but um, grateful, mostly, um, and uh, pitfalls, sure, whatever, but I've had much worse jobs, like way, way worse jobs. So uh, I'll scream for five hours and not talk for a week. That's fine. Um, it was really, really stressful. Stressful. Um, so I was, luckily I was already auditioning in my closet. I had a, um, I know, kind of crazy. Um, I already had a pretty great space. Um, I, I would do my auditions, most of them at that point already, and we had already been doing them for a couple of years from home. And every once in a while I would go into my agent's office or, because before that it was almost 100% in your agent's office or at a casting office. Um, so luckily I was already used to being in my closet and it was a great space, but I was using an iPad. I didn't even have an external microphone on it because it, you know I did a bunch of testing with my agents and I'm like, yeah, it's fine. Um, so you can, that's not professional grade quality <laughs> microphone. <laughs> so I was like, holy crap, what do I do? What do I get? What do I do? Um, so luckily, uh, so many of the engineers and production companies, like it was like this whole community, which is already awesome. It's already this amazing community. Everybody just like got together and we're like, we're gonna do a Zoom tutorial for everybody to tell you what what to do within like whatever budget that you have like they gave us like varying degrees of microphones and like it was like this TED talk on like you know how to and the, who, you know and which one and the one of the ones that I went I seriously I was like I think I'm having my first panic attack right now because he was so excited to tell everybody everything and he's awesome and I love him to pieces but I was like I seriously think I'm having a panic attack right now because he was talking in, in like I felt like I was at the final of a sound engineering course and I didn't go for three years <laughs> and I had to take the final because he was talking in terms of things that I you know he, I think he assumed that we knew more than we did which I know nothing I'm not a sound engineer I don't have to touch the buttons they touch what they tell you don't touch anything you're not allowed to touch anything so I was freaking out um, so anyway, blah, 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 got past that. So I, I decided on a microphone, I'm on the phone with the guy, and as I'm on the phone with the guy, they sell the last one. But he's like, but I have a 107. I'm like, what's a 107? I need a 103. And he's like, no, no, it's the same. It just has different, more stuff. I'm like, I don't need more stuff, because it's buttons. Um, anyway, so it took, a, it took a minute. It took a solid, it was a solid two weeks, which seemed like an eternity before I was fully set up and ready to go. Um, but then, poof, we 
were doing it. And who did we could dub from your closet? It was bananas. I'm like, how many screens am I gonna need? All I had was my laptop. It was, it was insane. It was insane that we were able to do it. And all I had to do was put, I put a rug on the floor. We hung some furniture blankets on one side of the closet because the other side was mine and I have way more clothes than my, than my husband does. Um, and he put something on the door. Um, he put like a little foam piece in there. We didn't have to do anything to the ceiling. Like I really didn't have to do anything as far as treatment, which was huge. And now he has built me my a, a proper space. So I have that now and we got our closet back. But it was a solid two years of that and crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah, I think everybody, when 2020 happened, you know, voice acting like the rest of the world was like, well, this is fine, it's two weeks, we're gonna be fine, right guys? We're okay. Um, and the community is amazing and really, really, really special. Um, I'm going to share a story where I'm vulnerable because my therapist says it helps me. Um, <laughs> I'm working on it. Um, so I had a very different- I'm here for you. Thank you. Okay. Um, <laughs> I had a very different uh, experience in 2020. Um, my partner, my life partner, uh, was diagnosed with leukemia in October of 2020. He's, we're still in treatment, he's doing really well. We're very, very fortunate to have such an amazing team. Um, but because it was COVID and the height of COVID, um, he, like, he was sick, he started getting sick in April and like we couldn't get a diagnosis and like we saw these doctors and it was just a mess. So in October it was like, this is what's happening and you're going to the hospital right now. And so I had just been cast as a lead in a show called Decadence. And uh, we were about to start recording My Hero. And um, when he was admitted into the hospital because of COVID, uh, there were a lot of restrictions. So um, I had to get tested and tests were really hard to find at that point, um, even for the hospital. Like I had to be tested by the hospital. So they couldn't get me a test until 12 hours after he went in and then I had to wait 24 hours after that to get the results. And then I, could, I was cleared to go in. Um, and they're like, okay, so you'll go in um, and you'll have to be in the room with him. And like, you can't, uh, you can't leave the hospital at all, um, except for once a week. And once a week you can leave for 24 hours as long as you promise you're just going to your home closet and coming right back. And I was like, I can make that promise, that's fine. I can still work. So um, between that time when he went in and when I was cleared to go in, um, the hospital uh, person for the floor, the, the head nurse woman, um, met me at the door and was like, hey listen, just so you know, everything has changed in the past few hours and if you enter now, um, you will not be able to leave. And if you do leave, uh, if I even like stepped on the elevator to go down to the coffee shop, um, from that moment that she told me, like if I went back to my car to get anything, like I wasn't gonna be allowed back in at all. Uh, and I was like, okay, but like after like a week and I test again, she was like, no. And I was like, but could somebody else come in and be with him? And she was like, no. And so it was like, either I go in with my partner who's facing the most challenging moment of his life uh, or I, and give up those roles or I don't. Um, and obviously like that's not a question if it's the love of your life, obviously. Um, so I went in and then I called the producer. I'm definitely gonna cry, you guys. <laughs> I went in and I called the producer and I was like, hey, um, I'm not gonna be able to do it. Uh, I'm really sorry, and um, I'm heartbroken about it, but you're gonna have to recast uh, Decadence and um, get a voice match for Jiro, for my hero, uh, and then hopefully by next season I'll be back. And he was like, give me, uh, he was like, give me like two hours. Let me call you in like two hours. Um, and so he called my best friend, Brina Palencia, who's also in My Hero, and she's also, uh, she plays uh, Minetta. She's also Juvia in Fairy Tale and uh, CL Phantom Hive in Black Thought. She's very, very talented. Uh, but her brother is a sound engineer. Uh, one of like, he's much more than, like, he's like the sound engineer for Crunchyroll. Um, so Zach, the producer, called Brina and Gino, and they had like this powwow. And then he called me like 30 minutes later, and he was like, if we can make it happen, would you be willing to record there? And I was like, in the hospital? And he was like, yes. Yeah. So they manufactured, not manufactured, they like rigged this crazy system between tea stands and sound blankets. And I got clearance from the hospital because I could be in the, I would like do yoga and stretch and cry in the waiting room because nobody was there. Um, but there was like a little phone room for when it's normal. Uh, so I got clearance from the hospital to use the phone room for work. And so I would go in like, whenever I had a session and I'd like put these tea stands up and these sound blankets and I'd set up the mic and I'd set up like a couple of iPads and then I'd scream my face off for hours 
uh, sometimes I didn't even have a session. Uh, and, like, it was just like my, it was the thing, it, I mean, it's, it to I can honestly say like anime saved my life in that moment and wow. it was really special um, because the community is so amazing and like that's the first time in a, a really long time that Funimation ever held a release of anything um, and it was a really, really big deal and it means so much to me. Um, so I'm always grateful and I always tell that story because it's such, I mean, it's just an amazing tribe and it was such a hard time, not just for us, obviously, for so many people around the world and considering like other things, like we're incredibly fortunate and so lucky and that is never far from our purview. Um, but yeah, that was my recording set up in 2020. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody cry with me, it's so fun. <laughs> I'm home. I mean, it was a good ending. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's amazing that they did that for you. That's, yeah. I mean, I nobody that. does that. It's, it's so just, crazy. It's just amazing how technology's gotten so flexible to where you could do something. Yeah. Like, like, 10 years ago, that would be impossible. Yeah, it was insane. I mean, I think it was the worst for the janitor, like, the first few times. He was very upset. Because uh, I was recording a video game as well, and it was, like, a whole lot of, like, I'm going to kill you, uh, you bleeping bleep. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what you don't want to hear in a cancer ward? Yeah. That. Uh, <laughs> it's fine. Um, that was a weird time. I bet. But amazing that that the hospital let you bring the stuff Oh, in. my God. <laughs> it was crazy. Because if they were saying you can't even go to your car, like, amazing that they were allowed the stuff to come in. And yeah, the stuff had to be. How did they get it there? So they brought it in, um, and they couldn't come into the hospital. Sure. So Brina and Gina brought it in, and the hospital brought, like, a special cart. Okay. And they had to, like, clean the blankets and sanitize the blankets and seal them before they brought them, and then the cart and all the equipment went somewhere else for 24 hours, and I didn't see it. Okay. And then they brought it up to me. Wow. It was crazy. And they brought you a microphone and whatever mm -hmm. you needed. That's awesome. It that's was amazing. so weird. Yeah. Well, even that they had internet, because that's, that was a really tricky yeah. thing, too, is if, you're, if your internet wasn't solid, there were dropouts, and like you're in the middle of a whole thing, and you're like, hello? 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 <laughs> hello? Are you still there? Oh, crap. Did I lose you? Um, hello? I think I'm still recording a backup. I don't... Um, <laughs> hello? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. that, if the hospital had a good enough Wi-Fi, that's... I did mean, you have to use a hotspot? Like, what did you do? Uh, I used the hospital's Wi-Fi, I okay. think. I think I did, but it might have been. I'm not really sure. Wow. The whole thing is kind that's of amazing. a blur to me. Yeah. I bet. Yeah. Oh God, so, I'm so glad that he's doing better. Yeah, yeah. He's, we're, we're getting through it. So, he's still in chemo, but um, oh, we're getting awesome. through it. And right. he's doing great. He's doing great. And a lot of that is because we have an amazing tribe. Um, and... We are incredibly lucky, super duper lucky, so, so lucky, uh, and yeah, very grateful, wow. super grateful, That's amazing, yeah. Let's talk about some fart jokes, anybody? <laughs> <laughs> uh, other questions? I promise not to cry again, if that made anyone uncomfortable. I'll cry. I'll ask, make me cry. It's a team I dare you. Thank you, Polly. <laughs> Thank you. Standing in solidarity. <laughs> yeah. Vulnerability. I'm fine. Yeah. Um, yeah, I kind of did things a little bit backwards because I made my voiceover deaf. I was already taking acting classes. I was taking acting classes at the Actors Lab. And what was great about finding that class was one of, like, be we it was a once a week class, but before class, every week we would sit in a circle and we would have to tell the whole class what we did that week to further our career. And it, as simple as, like, you know, making a phone call or working on a monologue or whatever it was, the simplest thing to the biggest thing. Like I had an interview with a casting director or I had an interview with a new agent or whatever it was or I had these auditions. You had to, so it kind of, it helped have accountability because, you know, everybody gets busy. You gotta pay your bills. You gotta feed yourself. You have to be, you know, do the grown up part of being, you know, on your own. But um, it held you accountable for at least doing one thing every week toward you know, to further your career. So, um, so that was great. So I was still, so I was already taking that acting class, um, and uh, yeah, I, um, <laughs> I, I made a, a voiceover demo before I took a voiceover class. Whoopsie. <laughs> uh, but luckily, I, I'm trying to remember. I took, I took a couple. I did. I took a Sue Blue. Um, uh, what was it called? or something something voiceover class I can't remember but the one that I took that was that was the most helpful um, then that was that one was great too um, but I took um, 
Chris Zimmerman's voiceover class, and she it was she she can be really like she's an intimidating lady, and I've worked with her a couple of times after the class. I I worked with her in some video games and other things, and you know she she she's no nonsense, and you know all of us as actors we are pleasers. We want to do well, and we also always take things the wrong way sometimes. You think, what does she mean by that? If she didn't say it was awesome, that means she thought it was horrible. You know, like you think, oh, I really screwed it up because she didn't say woohoo. Yeah. She's not a woohoo gal. If she doesn't say anything, then okay, moving on. If she says moving on, I guess you did it. Um, you know, it's not, you know, but I mean, always you're like, oh, I'm going to get recast. She hated it because she didn't say anything. But, but it was good to have her. She wasn't as like that as much in the in the class but um anyway she was great and i did a, i did another workshop with um one of the agents at icm i think i think um she was doing a like a voiceover like just like a two two or three week thing um and she was great too because she really um she had some great copy that we worked on and actually one of the pieces i think is still on my voiceover demo from a million gazillion years ago um but yeah she was great too um all these powerhouse women I just realized that's amazing who knew um yeah uh she uh she was like she was very encouraging and she was like um you need an agent but icm is too big for you you're not you're, you would be a teeny tiny little fish in a very large pond. And so that was a really big learning thing for me was like when you when you guys are ready, if you're ready to find an agent, you it needs to be the right one for you. You have to remember that they work for you, but also you want to be in a good place in the agency. You know, like where I am now, I've been with this agent for 25, 27 years. Holy cow long long time but like these days everything's fast everything is you know bam 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 if even if they say the thing is due at 9 a.m you got to try and get it in before that because especially like commercial copy forget it they just they listen and when they hear it they go yeah that one so they may have still have 50 auditions to listen to and you, they never got to you so everything's fast 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 and they don't want to listen to that many so sometimes they're like send us your top 10 your top five your top two I'm in a great place in my agency now where if it's in my range, I get to get that audition. So this is um, what I will say to you all, embrace the audition. You don't have to do it, you get to do it because not everybody gets to. Um, I'm so fortunate to be in a place in my agency, they know me, they know what I can do, and I, you know, I get a lot of auditions. So, um, so yeah, so that's so those are the things that I those are the classes that I took. Those classes probably aren't available anymore. Um, but what I can tell you is like Steve Bloom has a great workshop. He um, he's fantastic. He's got Bloom. Oh, that's my baby girl. I have to call you back. I know you can't hear me, but I'm hanging up on you. Okay. Um, Steve, Steve Bloom is fantastic. Bloombox Studios. Um, he has great classes. Uh, Dee Bradley Baker. He doesn't teach classes, I don't think, but he has a wonderful website. Um, how to like how to be a voice actor .com or something along those lines. Um, Tara Platt and Yuri Lowenthal have a wonderful book that they've put out. I'm trying to think of other classes online. Well, Strawberry Hill. I'm actually coaching in a Strawberry Hill workshop in uh, November. Um, so there's lots and lots and lots of resources online to find. Um, but those were the ones that I took, but I, like I said, I don't think those are around anymore because I'm an old lady. Um, I like your old lady voice. I'm an old lady. Thank you. Yeah, and I was going to do, I forget why I didn't end up doing it, but I was going to do a Kalmanson Kalmanson. They had a great commercial workshop that I was going to do, and I forgot, I was probably, because I was poor, I probably couldn't afford it. Um, but that's the tricky thing, too, is like you want to take all these classes, but everything costs money, so you have to, you still have to be able to take care of yourself and make sure that you, you know, you stay fed and you have a roof over your head and, you know. How long were you hustling before you were like just acting? Like how many years were you in LA like hustling with however many side jobs? That was a really hard decision to, yeah. to let go of those, you know, I mean, I, I tried to do everything, all the jobs that I had, I tried to, 
have them be, you know, they had, you had to be flexible because if somebody said, come to this callback, you had to be able to go. Um, and I was trying to do it on camera too, and those are like, there's no, there's no time in advance to schedule that. You, you know, if you don't go, you missed it. Um, so I'm trying to think, because I was, let's see. It was hard though. I, it took me a while to be like, okay, I quit. Like it was really, yeah. because I, I even, I, I was already doing, I was already doing Digimon and the kids from Room 402. And I think I still was hanging on to one of my three jobs at that time. I'm trying to remember when, I, it was at least, let's call it five years, at least. Yeah. At least five, maybe, maybe more. I feel like that's something that we re rarely talk about. Like the actual, like, it's a hustle and it's a grind. And if it's what you want, like, it takes a lot of dedication and it takes a lot of sacrifice and it takes a lot of, nonsense and there's very little so security there's zero <laughs> there's nothing even if you're on a regular show yeah if your character's not in an episode you don't get to go that day yeah. so and it's not like they're gonna pay you to not be there because yeah. they're not gonna you know we are considered a day player that is it and it, it, basically like imagine a, any kind of normal job um having to have an interview for every single day of work that you have you know, it's, it's, it's not easy, but you know, again, I say embrace the audition because you can't get the job without the audition and you know, it's like chicken a in the ticket. it really is. Yeah. It really, really is. You and they're it. always, and still today, like there are ones that I'm like, Oh, I made the, I could, I could voice the crap out of this character. Like I, there are some, I had one last week. I was like, Oh my God, I want this so bad. And it's all I could do not to be like, did they guess it yet? Have they called? Are they calling? Do, 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 they want, do we want me to do more? Should I do something else? What, what should I do? Because I really, really, really wanted it. Yeah. So we'll see. I mean, I to, and you have to let it go. What I started doing was I started writing down all of my auditions so that I could just let them go. It's I, hard. Yeah. I Harry Potter those things out of my brain. It is oh, I like it. Oh, I, can. I like it. Like after I like after the prep and after the after I record it and send it off, I'm like that audition is over and I didn't get it. Moving on. <laughs> uh, and then if I get a call, I'm like I got it. Like it's always really nice. But I try and Harry Potter it so like hard. It. It's just a, it's a challenge. It is. Other questions? Because we can battle we all can. day. <laughs> Who wants to see more crying? Hmm? <laughs> I did, uh, I've done a few that are, so here's the great thing about art, right? And the thing that I love the most about being an actor is it's storytelling. We're telling stories and those stories come from real life and real world experiences because art is a reflection of the society in which it's made, right? Uh, and a long time ago, there was a show called Speed Graffer um, that was very, very dark and very, very heavy. Um, and I played a character whose family, whose parents were indebted to, uh, a mafia sort of situation. Uh, they were murdered in front of her, it was really sad, and uh, her brother ended up being this one of the bad guys, like one of the big bad guy villains. Uh, she was taken away as a child and uh, sold into human trafficking, and he finds her later. Um, so I played the five-year-old innocent girl playing with her big brother when he's like seven, and we're having a great time, and we're in this beautiful mansion, and everything's wonderful, and lovely, and perfect, and pretty. Uh, and then uh, fast forward like 20 years, and he finds her, to save her, and she's um, been in this horrible situation for the past 20 years and is, uh, you know, on drugs and messed up, and he kills her. Uh, and it was really hard, and it was really awful, and um, the director was like, this is what it is, and like gave me the whole rundown, and I was like, that's so hard, and he was like, and it exists, so do you wanna do, you wanna do it? And I was like, yeah, but man, that's rough. Uh, but that one always, that sticks with me, for sure. Um. Mine are not so deep. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have, there's so many moments in Sonic Boom that I will never ever forget. Yeah, let's talk about that. Let's talk about oh that. That's God. so much better. Seriously. So you've got, you've got Nika Futterman and Cindy Robinson and me and Roger Greg Smith and Travis William. And then when Orban and Cubot were there, we'd have um, Wally and Kurt on the side. And then Mike, ba Mike Pollock is in your headphones. <laughs> and you've got these two over here. You got Roger and Travis making fart noises and being like 12 year old boys. And then you've got Cindy and I getting triggered by anything and we start singing. And I'm, 
I swear to God, every single time, we would start singing the exact same song in the exact same key. Sometimes we had choreography. It was ridiculous. So we're like, anything goes, and we're like tap dancing, and it's, yeah, that's not part of the show. Can you, ha, ah, wrangling cats. Um, but as far as like the, so all of those moments are just awesome. Do you, do you know if those tapes still exist? That's the thing is they should have had a camera rolling the whole time. I mean, one of us should have had a GoPro on our head and like, but um, that would be so cool if they animated it now. Like, right? like not even as your characters, but just as you guys like sitting in the booth, you yeah. know? I mean, I I don't know if they if they were recording the whole time. Oh. I mean, the engineer could have been like, <laughs> <laughs> enough already. Um, who knows? But um, as far as like script moments. Um, Dutitude is up there. That was amazing. We got to like rap as Tails and Knuckles and Sonic. Like, Dutitude is back, y'all. We ain't whack, y'all. I mean, it was just ridiculous. Um, but then the, my favorite, favorite episode was uh, Tails Crush because I got to play Zoe too. So I had a crush on myself and I had this whole like, like it was, you know, I had like dialogue with myself. So we would record it uh, like the first time we recorded it straight through with me playing both parts at the same time, which was, it was crazy. And then, and then we did a pass, just Tails, and a pass, just Zoe. Um, but yeah. That's so fun. Yeah, oh my god, it was, it was ridiculous. Seriously, it's amazing we ever got anything recorded. <laughs> Seriously. But such a blast, yeah. so much fun. Yeah. So much laughing, my face hurt after those sessions. <laughs> and then, you know, the thing about, um, one more thing about Sonic Boom, the thing about that show is the script was so brilliantly written, like, we, it was one of those, we would get the script ahead of time, like, with anime, I don't know if you ever get the scripts ahead of time, but I never, ever, you don't get the scripts ahead of time. Um, so, with an original animation, typically, you will get the script ahead of time, but sometimes you're busy and you just didn't get to it, or you just flip through and you find your stuff, and, like, sorry, bullshit, bullshit, my line, like, like, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, with Sonic Boom, I could not wait for those scripts to arrive, and I would read it from beginning to end. I'd be like, da, 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 nobody talk to me, I'm reading my script. And it was just, they were hilarious on, on the page, they were funny. And then you add all these brilliant actors to it, and it was just like, ugh, hilarious. So, yeah, funny. So we have time for one more question. Does anyone have one more question? Oh, we'll do two. We'll, we'll do two. That's an impossible question. It can't be answered. Same. <laughs> they're all like my babies. Like, right? I feel like they're like yeah. a little piece of me because you have to put so much of yourself into it. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Sorry. Tricky. We what? love them all. Who's yeah. your favorite? There we go. Do you have a favorite for Trina? Okay. Let's just say Tails because I feel like... Oh, yes. Come on. I mean, like, I... I very rarely get to play happy characters. Like all of my characters are like really messed up and traumatized. Things that I've realized over the years. Um, I want. I want to play. I like. I like that. Let's go with tails. Favorite across the board. Uh. <laughs> and what's your? Um, yeah. I when I first started voice acting, like people would tell me about forums and things like that. And so uh, this is like free Twitter, because I'm an old. Um, but like, yeah, uh, I, I would look at stuff and then people would be really mean and say really messed up stuff. And I'd be like, at, at a very uh, early point in my professional career as a voice actor, I was like, no, thank you. So like, I just, uh, I, don't, I don't really expose myself to those sorts of things, just because for me and my own well-being, like, I get really defensive, especially if it's like, because all of, a lot of the voice actors in the community, like, I'm very close with. And if somebody talks, badly about a friend of mine, then I'm, I'm going to have something to say. Uh, if they talk badly about me, then I'm going to be like, they're right! <laughs> they're right! You know, like, I just, I don't, I don't have that space in my brain. I would like, and similarly, I also don't want to be like, I am the best girl, like, you don't even know, you know, like, I'm like, I'm uh, So, I, don't, I personally don't. Do you look at those things? Um, I... I don't often. Um, so I am like, I am Jon Snow. I know nothing. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I learned so much about the things that I work on from you guys. It's ridiculous. Um, so what you, what you asked in the very beginning was if we get to see a picture. Um, 
when we do anime, there's a picture there, so we've got a script and a, and the, the picture is going, so that we're having to match picture. Um, when you're doing an original animation, you do not. But hopefully, and because I'm a very visual person, hopefully I've at least seen a rendition of what the character might look like, because that's that's how I come up with a character. I, I, I need to see it. Like, I can give a voice to a dog that has an expression on his face because I feel like that's what that dog is saying. I know that's what they say, obviously. Um, so, uh, so in that instance, then, then I'd love to have a picture. So then as far as like looking up stuff online, like I was like strong armed onto Twitter and like, you know, <laughs> beaten up to get onto TikTok. Like I really, I don't, I, I will do it because I know now I get it, we have to, but I don't, if anybody starts an argument on my thing, I'm like, this isn't the place, this is for rainbows and puppies, I'm sorry. <laughs> Move along, please. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I just tell them, I'm like, look, please don't have your argument here. Um, you're all entitled to your opinions, but this is not the place for it. And I, I'm all about happy, light, yay, <laughs> tell jokes. Um, so, but that also being said, I've been really lucky. Like, I know Roger Craig Smith and Michael, Mike Pollock have had a lot of opinions. <laughs> the Sonic fan base um, are very passionate. They have a lot to say. Um, I have been so, so lucky to not have the negative coming at me. And that I've seen. It's, prob it's very possible that it's out there, but I have only gotten so much positivity. I can't tell you how grateful I am and how, how overwhelming that is. I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. I've been so, so lucky because Tails is a really beloved character, and who knew? Again, I didn't know. I I had heard of him, but I didn't. I did not know. I, I have people coming up saying, "Oh, my, we played as a kid, and my brother always made me play Tails, but he was better, you know, because he's my favorite, and he's got a special place in lots of people's hearts." And so to have that love and say to have people tell me that they love my version of Tails is that. That means so much to me, and I'm so grateful because there are other people that played it, and I'm sure they were lovely too. But I don't know. <laughs> but um, you know what I mean. So I'm um, anyway. That's my. E. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for coming out yes, and hanging out, y'all. Uh, we will be back at our tables in mere moments. Uh, we both have to leave at five o'clock, unfortunately. So if you didn't have uh, a question answered, or you think of one in the next couple of hours, we'll be over there and. Thank you so much for coming. Yes, thank you. Thank you for having us. And you guys are wonderful. Nice to you. Please come say hi. Thanks for watching Anime Diet. Be sure to smash that like and subscribe button for more tasty treats.